All right. Oh, look. My friend Kimberly made her way on. Hey, Kim. Hey, Nikki. Raleigh Jacobs is back. Bianca. Um, this is going to be... Uh, yeah. Let me tell you, Nikki, the meet and greet yesterday, um, it was two hours. So it was, oof. Um, don't worry, you catch the recording. So Kim said you got a couple free minutes. Kim, how's the grandbabies? You like my shirt? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, thank you for joining. What's going on, Mev? I hope Rafa comes on tonight. I know Rafa had some a story to share, and she wanted to talk to us. Kim, is it cold? I was actually... So, Kim, I was in Boston. Um, I flew up. I was in Rhode Island last this past weekend, Saturday. I was just up there this past week. But I flew in Friday... Had a meeting Saturday morning and I flew back out. So I didn't make it up to to up to Mass or even up your way. But hey guys, look, um, welcome, welcome tonight. We are gonna again remember. <laughs> Mav says cold up there. We, you know what's funny? Every time I start live, it looks like Fat Joe goes live on the same time that I go live. Which is interesting, because I go live, and then Fat Joe goes live right behind me. I guess I'm competing with Fat Joe. Oh, you were born and raised in Newport. Oh, wow, Nick. Yeah, I spent a lot of time up there in Newport. A lot. In fact, um, you know, that's where our projects are at. Oh, Kim, I forgot to tell you. Today, um, I got notice that the Bunker Hill job that we're negotiating, they got the funding for it. I received that notice today, which is so crazy because it's after the fiscal year. So I received an email today that they actually funded that project. So, which is really, really neat considering like we were negotiating that back in January. So that's that whole thing turned out to be great. Uh, Naval Station Newport. Yes, I'm working at Naval Station Newport, Nikki. That's where we're working. Um, that, in fact, that's where I picked up a couple of my projects this, uh, like the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, no, I was so surprised, Kim. I was like, thank you. I was so surprised because I wasn't expecting it. I have, we have not spoken to them since that time. And all of a sudden today, I receive a random email. And I'm thinking, from GSA, I'm thinking it's a new project. And I'm not GSA, I'm sorry, from uh, National Parks. And I'm thinking it's a new project. And I'm like, wait a second, this... And he said Bunker Hill. So looks like we'll be doing the, the monument up there. Yeah, Nick, you're very familiar. Yeah, I'm, I spend, I'm actually, so when, I, when I'm when i in town, I stay in Providence. Uh, and then because Providence is close, because we're doing projects in, in, at the sub base, we're at Newport Naval, we're up at Hanscom, up in Mass. So Providence is like central where we go south or north. But yeah, we're I'm on Newport all along. Yeah, it looks like Kim, it looks like they had to find the money. But it's but they never told us that. They never told us that they were looking for the money. Right? That that wasn't the case. They uh Oh, somebody else says they're born in Newport. Okay. Wow, we got some Rhode Island people in the building tonight. Okay. Yeah, no, Nikki, it's really it's well, you know what's encouraging for me? Not only did it it's that it just passed the fiscal year. So Remember, my whole um, experience says that, hey, you know, the fiscal year ends, they spent the money, or it looks like some money came from somewhere, and now, what's today, the 6th, the 7th, they found the money, and um, they asked me where my price is still valid from our January negotiations. So that's that's very good news, encouraging news. But look, uh, today is going to be our last uh, IG Live, not last, like, permanently, but just maybe for like a month um, because we really have to catch up on all the other stuff that we have to do behind the scenes, shoring up 
the stuff that we've been working on. Remember, this September, August was hectic month. Uh, we really made a big push. We did well. A lot of our students did well. A lot of people won contracts. Uh, we just received an email yesterday from another student. She won her first contract last past week, almost a million dollars. And it, and so again, a lot of people have. We just been really busy, right? And now we got to get back to putting together the content and the basis behind it. And then also we're working on a lot of new projects. So Maria, she's got some projects that she's working on. Maria, are you able to come on and share? Hopefully Maria could come on. She could talk to you about some of the new stuff that she's working on with GovCon Giants and um, you know share that experience because we're doing a lot of great things. We're continuing to expand and grow and be able to provide content. So yeah, she she was on earlier, Nick. She was just on like in the beginning. So but yeah, definitely um we're adding to the organization. Look, we've got a lot of stuff in the works. So <laughs> Maria says she's a baby goat. Maria, can you come on or no? Are you in a place where you can talk? What's up, Barbara Well? Sheena Preneur, what's up? What's up? So, yeah, okay. Marie says, give her five minutes. She comes on. Hey, look, if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to jump on, jump on live, let me know. By the way, as always, I have to remind you, let people know where you're from. Let people know your industry. We take these sessions and then we chop them up and we put them on YouTube where they live. So again, if you're not telling people, if you have contracts and you just want to be quiet, that's cool. Then I understand. I respect that. But if you don't have contracts and you're trying to get plugged in, you're trying to get connected with folks, you want people to know about your business, like give yourself a shout out. There's no, There's nothing wrong. You don't have to be humble. Like, hey, I, this is my industry. This is the city I'm at, right? So look for opportunities because I'm telling you, um, people call me and they let me put stuff in my mind. And if I hear about something, I definitely like, hey, what about that guy who said he does this? Uh, we had a lady that reached out to me who wanted to do nursing and staffing. She talked to me, did a call with me, and then we shot our bunch of stuff that we found. So if you don't let me know your industry, if you don't let me know your city, then how can we reach out to you? How can we help you? That's just kind of like my two cents. So definitely let people know about who you are, like what do you do? So that way we can be able to plug you in with someone else. We're, I mean, we're always getting calls from people with opportunities. Um, just two days ago, Maria got a call from a prime contractor that won this big project here in the Panhandle in Florida. And the guy who was supposed to be doing all of the AC work, um, he pulled out. So now they're looking for an, an another person to do, literally it's millions of dollars in AC work that he doesn't have a sub over in the Panhandle. So again, if you know someone that's in the AC field that's looking to work in Florida, we've got a prime contractor looking for an AC company that can take on um, six figures, low seven figures worth of work. So big projects. Look, this is happening all the time. There's actually a shortage of qualified contractors out there. There's a shortage. There's a shortage of people out here. So to me, the only thing that's separating you from your first contract, your second contract, is literally connecting with the, uh, the right person. And, and if we can help facilitate that just by you being on our show, that's wonderful. Let's get the goat, let's get the goat on the line. Where's the baby goat? Ah. Ah. <laughs> There's the baby goat. What's up, baby goat? Nothing much working. Trying to put your podcast up, being that I'm a late, a day late. And a dollar short. Yeah, lots of dollars short. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, that's good. So look, I uh, I didn't want to, you know, spoil the news. I want you to tell people kind of what your the new stuff that you're doing. I know you made a video today. I know you 
you know, by the way, like Maria has already been interviewed for podcasts. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spoil the news. Maria is now being a guest on other people's podcasts and other shows. Uh, they're asking for Maria to be a guest on shows, sharing her experiences. So, um, <laughs> which is really awesome. Yes, I, I see you. Put, keep putting in there your industry and where you're at. But go ahead, Maria, tell us, tell us some of the stuff that we're working on that we got coming up in 2021. So we were talking and like he said, right now we're just gonna take a break because we have a lot more stuff that we want to do and we just need the time. So that's when we were saying like, let's focus on that. And it's stuff that a lot of you guys are going to enjoy. Um, one of the biggest thing is um, a podcast. Um, Eric came to me with the idea because I've seen that a lot of people have taken motivation and inspiration, which I personally think it's crazy from me and from my, my podcast episode, um, just because they could relate to me being that I'm normal. And I tell Eric all the time, I'm normal and you're not. So being that I was able to do that first contract, a lot of people see that and now they feel they could do it. So we're going to do a whole podcast on, I want to call it, the making of a GovCon giant. So we're going to bring in a lot of our students and a lot of our people in the community that have won that first contract. Like, what did they do differently? Like, what did they do? How did they step over that fear? Which I think is the biggest thing is overstepping that fear instead of just trying to, I was talking to someone, like, instead of, he's like, what should I do? Should I keep on learning and going through the course or should I start? I'm like, just do it. I'm like, because if you keep trying to learn everything, it's just going to overwhelm you. And you're going to, if you're like me, you're just going to overthink. I'm like, go find a client. Just do it. Just make a, pick up a phone and do a phone call. So um, it's going to include a lot of our people, like people that you hear about, Randy, Leilani, um, Sh Shakira, like all these people that have come into the program or have just won contracts from Eric's videos and for them just to share their journey, like the good things, the bad things, because I think sharing our struggles and sharing our challenges is more important than sharing our success. Like I tell people, I did five contracts this end of the fiscal year and I got one. And I think that's important because you learn so many more lessons that way. So that podcast is our first edition. The second thing that we're working on is Spanish content. Um, I know that months and months ago, GSA came to us wanting Spanish things and that's where the first three videos came from. Um, Today, I did a source of stop video in Spanish, and that's because I take that one personal because I was able to go after a source of stop from a Friday video that Eric made and reached out to them. I got a site visit, and I was given a contract from that. So I fell in love with source of stop, and I feel like that is a hidden secret. A lot of people, including myself, saw this is not a bit and we stop ourselves from doing anything if we don't think anything's coming out of it. But one letter of interest that you already have a template for could bring you so many more opportunities. So we're gonna do a lot of more. Um, my goal, and I put it on my whiteboard, is 15. 15 Spanish videos by the end of the year. I have three, and I'm not gonna count those three, so I have 15 to go. Um, so I did that. Um, we have a lot of people reaching out and LinkedIn on YouTube wanting to learn more. Um, someone even asked for the course in Spanish and it's possible. <laughs> it me time. Um, I know that Eric's course is long because I've had to input those videos three times. So it's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I'm going to focus on the podcast and on the Spanish content. The other thing that we have starting is a lot of you guys reach out to us and feel like you need that more of the hand holding attention to, to for you to feel that you can do this. So we're going to have a coaching program. Um, the coaching program is going to give you the opportunity to have those one on one sessions with either me, other of the GovCon coaches, and depending on what tier you get is how many services you get. And it's more of a a one-on-one -on -one approach. Um, we're gonna guide you, give you homework once a week, let you know what to do next and things like that. So that one is our big one that's coming up. So those are the top three things that are happening right now. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, I'm really, really excited for the Spanish work. 
Like, I'm telling you guys, um, I'm from South Florida. I don't know where y'all at, but I know people in Texas and people in Georgia and people like we have a huge um, Latin population and people, and it's not that they don't speak English, but they feel more comfortable and understanding in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely want to be able to serve that audience as well and meet that demand. And we have, you know, we have people on our team that can do it. So we definitely want to take advantage and do that because, um, again, it expands our reach, right? Um, and, and it expands the, the breadth and depth of the things that we're doing. And I should take it more personal because I came to this country as an immigrant. Like, I came when I was four. And we came looking for those opportunities. So there's so many more people out there working their hardest every single day to be able to take advantage of these opportunities and pass it on to their children. So for me, it's more, as soon as the GS, I know you told me before, I heard it from you, but as soon as the GSA guy says, look what you could do for the Latino Hispanic community, I was like, oh, I have to do it. Like, I can't say no to my own people. Right. So, um, and now I saw emails like, oh, is the course gonna be in Spanish? Or like, uh, there's a lot more people reaching out to you and to us wanting this content. So I know that it's helpful. I know I have a client that that's what I do. I help him to tr translate things in Spanish because it makes a lot more sense when your brain thinks in Spanish. Right, right, right. And then the other thing is, guys, listen, I know we've had people, and, I, and look, I, I promise you, if you've ever sent me an email, if you ever sent me a DM, if you ever hit me up on Facebook, I promise you I got those messages. I'm still, I may be too busy to respond, but I saw them, I read them, I heard you. So again, I'm listening to what people are asking for. And one of the things that someone said, and by the way, thank you, Sheena, for, for promoting us and pushing us. You know, you've been around from the beginning. So thank you for that. I saw that comment, uh, big ups to you. And I see all the things that you're doing out there. But, but one of the things that people said to me was, Eric, I love the podcast of all of the successful people Right, but how do they get there? What was the first things that they did? How did they get started? When do I quit my job? You know, and like last week on IG Live, you saw with Mo, and Mo talked about quitting his job during a pandemic, but he had already built the relationships with the agency. So when he quit his job, right, within less than 30 days, the agency called back for another order. They put it in his new company's name, and boom he had his first contract. And so now he was off, like his first order with the government was for six figures. It was two or $300,000 order because he had already established that relationship. So then when he walked out from his job, he was just, he hit the ground running. So again, I think with the interviewing, the people who have their first wins uh, and even not just people who are having their own businesses, but like we have someone that emailed us two days ago or yesterday who won a contract for her company. So her company paid, she won a contract for a company, um, and we're going to talk about that experience. The first person that you interviewed, Maria, I think he did the same thing. He won a contract for his company. Um, yeah, the first person, um, he's actually in Hawaii, and he didn't move to, and this is the awesome part, I think. I'm like, oh, you're from Hawaii. He's like, no, I moved here for a contract. So he's living the good old Hawaiian life um, doing that. He's been doing it for so many years. And like many of our podcast guests, he's still- But, but I think, was it, wasn't his story he was looking for a job or something to that effect? Yeah, because he was over overseas in like Iraq or Afghanistan and he was doing it for other people. So, right. wow, well, he's like, wait, I, like he saw the numbers and he's like, I could do that and I could do it better. So that's when he started looking into it. And so he got a contract, just like the one that he was employed by. There you go. So no, we want to bring you those stories from people's beginning journeys as well. So that we think that that will complement the, the success stories, right? Of the people who are already, you know, 50, 100, 200 employees deep. Uh, we think that someone with zero employees, solopreneurs, uh, 10 or less people, right? Just getting started. Uh, you know, we have people that had to lay off staff, right? And and so those are different types of experiences and different types of uh, issues and challenges. And and really, I can say this, um, you know, I feel like a lot of the stuff that I did three years ago, uh, obviously I'm growing up in my content as well and, and what we're delivering because, you know, some of the people that have been along with me in this journey, like Ashina out there, they're also growing up and we're all growing up kind of like together in this space and so there's there's new needs. there's new uh oh something was echoing there's new 
um, needs and there's new thing issues that people are dealing with out here that they're faced with that we you know we want to be able to support them and help them in, in that particular realm and for the, the people who are new again that content still exists like all that content is still out there you know you could get it in fact I'll, you know when Maria gets off I'll tell you guys another story about something that happened to me recently oh, I but I, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no 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 wait wait before Maria goes listen does anyone have any questions for Maria I want to know if anyone out there has any questions for Maria. Drop it in there. Um, does anybody have any questions for Maria before we go? She's leaving. Going once. <laughs> Going twice. <laughs> All right. Um, bye, guys. Well, I, like I tell everybody, like sharing those stories is getting me excited, and that's the important thing. Like I want everyone to see that. Even if they're small contracts like the ones I do, it's possible. And if you are fearless more than me, like how Jody and Miguel did it, go for them big contracts. Cause, ooh, somebody I was talking to somebody on the phone today, and they're like, I can't believe this exists. Like I, I finally found somewhere I belong, and that's what I want everyone to feel. I want everyone to feel like this is like how can I have not done this for all this time? And let like, me ask you. Let me ask you something before you go. Uh, tell me, like you were talking to me about that opportunity, and you don't have to be specific about it, but like someone told you about an opportunity for a seed. Oh, so um, so the the Coast Guard sent me a a client a a contractor they wanted to use, but they needed me to help them with an eight A to give them a right. contract. Now that same person who came to me and he said. Hey, I have an AC job up in Patrick that the prime, I'm working with a prime, but I'm just too busy. Do you want it? And I was like, send it my way. I have a perfect person to do that. Right. So it's I, like relationships have, and just like the, the person that went today to a job, uh, a site visit up in the panhandle, like I didn't know about that. Somebody came to me with that opportunity, showing right. it to me. Right. All I did was copy the link send an email and now he went up there and he was like three one of three people no, yeah right 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 so right. it's those relationships that you build it's going to be the most valuable thing you could have because everyone's going to bring you something even if it's out of your realm they're going to bring it to you just because they want everyone to do this and also remember like the guy said he's too busy we all can't do everything oh no. i mean so for me why not have one of you that's watching receive that opportunity? We've already done this. We've demonstrated it with Rafa. We've done it with Lilani. Like we, again, if there's stuff out here, that they're saying, hey, we have these needs that are, that are being going unfulfilled. Do you have anyone in North Carolina or Tennessee or whatever? I'm not going to Tennessee. I'm not going to North Carolina. So you guys can have this stuff. I, I don't mind, you know, turning over the information. I don't want a oh. dollar from it. I don't ask for a penny. I don't even. I don't even ask for the credit. You guys take it. And you do it, and yeah. just the only thing I ask is do good work, do exceptional job, represent the organization well. You know, don't embarrass us, please. Don't embarrass us because <laughs> I will go off. <laughs> People who know on Tuesday calls, I don't been off, went off before. So don't embarrass us. Don't more, forget the us. Don't embarrass me, okay? <laughs> don't embarrass me, okay? Right? Because, I like your shirt. Right? Yes. Thank you. Beautiful shirt, Maria. Thank you. Yes, yeah. don't be embarrassing this name out here, right? Because it stands for a lot. And people yes. are recognizing the name and it's coming around full circle. And yes, don't use Gmail addresses. Thanks for that. Don't use Gmail. So, so yeah, so sharing is caring and it goes with um, information that Eric gives freely and for opportunities that we we'll hear about. So, all right. Just, so, bye, for guys. All, yeah, bye, guys. Bye, that's not just. <laughs> so again, if you're new, you're just jumping on. Hold on, let me see. I got a question. Somebody sent something. What is this? All right. So um, now, Sheena, listen. I am not messing with them local contracts. I don't care what y'all say. Listen, you guys can have all the local work that y'all can handle. I promise you. If anybody wants a local contract and I, and the government calls me, I will give it to any and everyone. I don't want them. So y'all can have every local contract that comes your way. I'm not messing with local contracts. I'm going to listen. The only reason 
the only reason why the local contracting is still working, in my opinion, okay, is because Congress passed a bailout, right, that for the CARES Act, the $3 trillion that bailed out all of the states and all the local governments. If they had not passed that bailout, the local government would be financially strapped because of all of the COVID expenses and they would shortfall all of us contractors. That's why I don't support that. Yes, so we can, um, it's great that it's still working, but I tell you what, just like with the airlines, how, okay, if they don't get any more money, the airlines said, what, they about to lay off 19,000 people because their money ran out? Same thing with the states. Anybody wants to take a look, right? Just take a look for your own edification. Look up the credit ratings for your local cities, your states. Look at their credit ratings. All of their credit ratings have dropped significantly. And without an influx of help from the federal government, they would be like choking. So because the government came in, bailed everybody out with a $3 trillion package that kept everyone afloat, which kept everybody open and, and allowed them to keep paying us contractors. But I just can't in my heart of hearts, I would have never known that was to happen. So how could I, what if I told you to do local contracts and then they, the government didn't bail us out and then you guys were stuck holding the bag? I can't have that on my conscience. So, and, I, and again, I gladly share one of my friends made, like made a million dollars profit off of local contracts this year during COVID. So again, I know it works, but it's just not something that I can teach to the masses. So I stick with something that I can teach that I can, that I can promise with that if, you know, you uh, do the activities, follow the process that they will pay you and it will work is the federal government. And so that's just my take on local context, but definitely, um, it, 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 you know, they, they do work, right? They do work. Um, and also, Sheena, like, real talk, you got to have money to do some of that stuff, right? You know, you got to have money. Yeah, you're, you're lucky, right? Because you, remember, I'm older than you. Well, I think I am, but I'm assuming I am. But again, I suffered in that 2008, 2007 crash when all the states went broke. I was there. And when they went broke and they couldn't pay, my friends were the ones that they had the, 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 you know, they had the receivables for. So it was like, and all of a sudden, and even now today, even now today, um, I got a buddy of mine who's doing work for the school boards and they owe him money. And I promise you, there's probably, there's 27 people watching. If any one of us out here um, are doing school board work or doing state work, I guarantee you they're behind on payment. I guarantee you that you're going to find people out here that's behind on their payments. It never fails me. It never fails. It's always I'm like, yeah, they're 60 days, 90 days out. So that's the only reason. But no, I listen, I love it. I, I'm happy for everyone. Just look, hey, when you like just stash some money. So when you make them big checks, stash a little bit, make a big check, stash them, make a big check, stash them. <laughs> like, it's just just stash, just tuck, just keep tucking because when hey, if they run out and they leave you hold the bag, you're gonna be like, ah, you're gonna be Eric. So uh, I, you know, but hey, it's cool. What else? What else? What else? Now I know you would snap. I mean, trust me, they people be playing with your livelihood. They be like, your house be on the hook, your cars be on the hook. Look, y'all ever seen on Facebook when y'all scroll that that repo show? You be out on that repo show. They be right here in your car talking about they doing an inspection. Uh, Sheena, we're doing an inspection in your car. Could you just uh, stand to the side, please, while we inspect your car? You be like, what y'all want to inspect my car for? <laughs> that's, that's the way I see it. So, all right, what else? What else? I've been silly for about 10 minutes. I'm ranting. What else you guys got? What else? Questions. This is our last show for like a month. So y'all better get it in. <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to see it right now. Look, I got this old hot light over here in my eyes. You know, I'm sweating. I gotta turn my AC off so y'all can hear me. Y'all better ask some questions. Sergio. 
Nikki, has anyone ever been like in a play, like when you were kids? Y'all don't remember being like on stage and they have all the lights? Like, I got all these lights. That's, you know. Uh, no, listen, trucking with us for life. You don't have to have the skill set. I mean, look, again, none of this is overnight, guys. Don't be discouraged. Don't feel like as though if, you know, we're sharing stories that where we've won contracts or people that you know won contracts that it like it just because it happened for you in the last six months or eight months that it's not going to happen. Um, I definitely think that, again, it comes with patience, right? I'm sure Sheena could share her stories that she didn't get her first contract like right off the gate. I mean, it just takes time. And, and um, so don't be discouraged because you know, maybe you don't have all of the answers or you don't know all the right things to say. It, trust me, it comes to you. If you keep absorbing, you keep, look, you, first of all, I don't even think y'all understand. Like there's 30 people on here. Um, you are already, the people that I'm talking to, you are in the room with great people already. Like, you do you not even understand that the people that I'm talking, like pay attention to who I'm calling their names. You are in the room surrounded by greatness already. So just even being on here tonight, whether you spent any money or not, like you are already in a company of people that are doing this. That should be enough encouragement and support. And if you look at their pictures, they would probably look like you. So, I mean, take that to heart and take that back with you and say, hey, look, wait a second. Um, so look, somebody, a couple people, <clears throat> they're saying, hey, they, the source of thought is working. It's free. I'm giving out a source of thought thing for free. I'm telling you how to use it for free. Maria just made a video in Spanish in case y'all don't understand the English for free. I don't even like, we're trying to give y'all all of the tools to be successful. So let me, uh, let me tell you something. I'll tell you a funny story that just happened with us. Um, I picked up a partner recently and uh, we talked about it. And so I, I was working, I was meeting with these guys this past weekend. And then when I met with, the, with these guys this past weekend, um, hold on, wait, I guess I see some people plugging in some stuff. So let me see. Let me scroll down real quick. Let me see what's on the feed. All right. Marcinda says, not having extra funds makes me nervous. Place my first bid. I have several supplies about supply credit on Alibaba, but they all said no far. Yeah. So again, um, I've never seen it anyone get supply credit through Alibaba. But you, you know, to get supply credit, you gotta go through the companies directly. So Alibaba is a, a portal that connects you with companies, but in order to get supply credit, you have to get it from the people that are actually supplying those goods. Sounds like to me, you're trying to sell something that you're buying overseas. So if that's the case, then um, I wouldn't sell that item because first of all, it's too risky. Um, second of all, you don't know the person, you can't go put your hands on them. Trust me, when your stuff is not right, you want to be able to put your hands on somebody. You want to be able to drive to their office, drive to their building, drive to their facility, and go see them when your stuff's not right. So um, I would not start off with Alibaba just because you send some people some money overseas and you don't get what you're supposed to get in a timely manner. They cancel your contract, your stuff come late, and guess what? You're stuck holding the bag. So I, that's just not something that I would recommend. I would work with the company that's here in the United States that, that has a product or has a distributorship. Even if they buy it from overseas, I don't care. I want to be able to go to your office, go to your warehouse and see my stuff. Cause when I get ready to ship it to the government and they ask for it, I got to come get mine. So I don't want to hear about the truck is late. The plane was delayed. Some the helicopter didn't make it. I want to go get my stuff. And trust me, I've done that before. I've driven halfway across the country to go get the stuff that I was owed to government. Because the people said they couldn't get it to me, no problem. I'm going to come get it. And I drove over there, came, got my stuff, and brought it back in. That's what you have to do. But if you order Alibaba, it's probably not going to happen. Johnny Spiva, we haven't sent out an email yet, brother. It's not Friday. Uh, Lori Sales is having a virtual women's conference. We're going to do a video on that. So we're waiting for me here. Sergio, yeah. Uh, listen. As soon as things open back up again, I will be happy to go back on tour. We'll be back in D.C. We'll be in Chicago. I, Atlanta, I know it's going to be rocking. So I can't wait. In fact, I might just slide through Atlanta like anyways. So just 
I'll let y'all know. I'll let all my people in Atlanta know. I might just slide through anyways because I got some folks up there who want to see me. So we may just pop in. Um, Barbara, Barbara Wells says we've got a supplier event coming up later this month. I need to get with the Department of Justice. Good stuff. Rafa. Tasha. What's up, Tasha? Tasha, we just launched our coaching program. Um, Brandon, someone's asking about where to find Maria's video. Can you drop that in the chat? Suppliers issue. <laughs> Liz, y'all better be, look, y'all listen. Yeah. Look, I'm telling you, don't do it. You got a lot of people on here. Tracy, what's up? Rafa, let's go live. Um, am I going to connect? Listen, I'm in Connecticut every other month. I was in Connecticut Saturday. I'm in, I, listen, I, my, so my contracts are in the New England area. All of my work. So I'm in Rhode Island. I'm in Connecticut. I'm in Massachusetts. I'm in New Hampshire. And I'm up in Maine. So I'm there all the time anyways, trucking with us for life, like all the time. In fact, I'm in Connecticut. I work, um, over at in Groton at New London at the sub base. I my I have the IDIQ for the entire sub sub base. It's I have the construction IDIQ for sub base in Connecticut. And I have the same thing over in Newport, Rhode Island. So I'm in Connecticut all the time, like like all the time. I flew in Friday, had a meeting Saturday and flew back out Sunday. I was back here in Florida. All right, Atlanta. See, Sergio said he used to bring his lights from China, but now it's much better to get it from California. Good job, Johnny. Working on a second quote. Good stuff. What's up, Jennifer? Sergio, Sergio, you know who you need to talk to? Um, David Stocks. Send, send, send Maria an email. In fact, send us an email. And matter of fact, it's not even Maria's email anymore. If you send an email to service at GovCon Giants, somebody drop that email in the chat. Um, send it over to there, and let me connect you with a guy, David Stocks, who was at the event, Sergio, that you were at. David Stocks works for a huge GC. Uh, let me connect you guys together. Um, the kind of contracts I have is all my contracts are construction. Why don't I work in Florida? Um, because, well, Maria works in Florida, so we have people here working in Florida. Uh, I don't work in Florida because um, I, I need a big partner. Like the stuff that I go after is really big. So I don't have um, a big partner in Florida. Uh, well, let me take that back. I did not previously have one. Today, we do have an operations now in West Palm Beach that we just set up. So we're going to start going after Florida opportunities. But uh, really, uh, um, I go after opportunities where I have large partners that I can work with. So that's just me. That's my strategic approach. I actually don't like construction personally anymore. Um, I don't like being in the field. I don't like really being with the guys. I like being more behind the scenes and putting the deals together. But again, I want to go after really big deals. So for me, I partner with companies that I can trust that can get everything done. And so just, it just kind of worked out that way where one of my really strong partners happens to be in the Northeast. So we just went after stuff in the Northeast and we just like grabbed everything down. Plus real talk, the Northeast was wide open. Like there was nobody there. So I'll give you guys an example. When we went to Rhode Island, there were eight, you can see all my fingers. There were eight, eight, eight companies in the entire state of Rhode Island, eight. And then there was three in construction. So where would you spend your time in a state like Florida where there's 200 or a state like Rhode Island where there's eight. And if you look at construction, there's three. And if you look at who actually does the kind of work we do, there was two. And if you look at, so, I mean, it just made sense for me. Right. Um, and then when I did pull up the data, my market research, 
they were they had spent like four hundred million dollars, and so it's a small state. They don't, you know. But even though Rhode Island's a small state, they have like like Nikki was saying, Newport Naval bases there, Groton sub bases down the street, and all these markets were completely untapped. Like nobody was doing it. Sheena, put your question mark self down. <laughs> but no, seriously, like I really walked on to these places, and these markets are wide open. Like right now, Maine is wide open. Um, Massachusetts, boom, I got my first, my first sole source came out of Hanscom Air Force Base up in Mass. Like my first uh, contract for the client that we want came out of Lowell, Mass. So it was, I mean, it just, it made sense. I don't, I, listen guys, we're doing business. We're like y'all, what y'all think? I just flip a coin and pick where I'm gonna show. I'm strategic. So you guys should be strategic. We're not bound. We're not, I always tell people, you're not a tree. You, you can move, right? So we're not bound or confined to our geographical area. You could go anywhere and do this stuff. It's, that's why I like federal because it's the same process. Like you got Army Corps, you got Army Corps. You got NAFAC, you have NAFAC. So like, I mean, again, Meb, that's Meb's the intern. He was up there. I brought him into a meeting. He saw how we get down. Like Kim, who was on earlier, Kim came to a meeting. She saw how we get down. Oh, Maria's telling me I got five minutes because the debate's coming on tonight, and I'm going to watch the debate. So what else do you have? I love everybody out here. All right, let me let, let's look at this question. What's an, e in the, what's an easy industry to focus on in the beginning? Um, an easy industry to focus on in the beginning would be an industry that you knew well. So... Um, I always tell people, start off with an industry. And, uh, like, again, if you say focus, right? Because you're saying easy. Um, an industry that you know well. That's easy. Now, I personally don't recommend easy. But if you want easy, then I would say whatever your strengths are at, whatever you know, whatever industry you're good at, um, that you have contacts and resources, you know suppliers, you know subcontractors, you know, whatever industry that you know, the vendors, that's the one that I would start off with. Because cause guess what? It's so easy for you to pick up the phone and call those people because they already know you. Like, hey, this is Jackie. Remember me? I used to work with such and such company. Like, like my boy got fired from Tiger Direct, but he knew all the suppliers who brought all of this computer electronics equipment. He knew them on a first name basis because he was a rep for Supplier Direct. So I would start off with an industry that I was already involved in and I had connections in. And then that way, regardless of the size of the opportunity, you could bring somebody to the forefront to help you do it. Hope that helps answer that question. Um, I'm having a hard time locating heavy equipment rental contracts. So heavy equipment rental contracts. Now, let me tell you something about that. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug somebody real quick. So um, our girl, Govlia, right? She she focuses on state. She focuses on love uh, local contracts. One of the things that you could do, and I talked to her about one thing that you could talk to her about is connecting with prime contractors that are supposed to be meeting their goals at the state and local levels. So if you're talking about heavy equipment rental, that's one of the areas that when my guys were looking at local goals, it's very easy for a big time prime contractor to really help you. Um, bring you in through a, an equipment rental contract. Because why? Because you're not going to mess up their project. They were going to rent that equipment from somebody anyways. There you go, Shakia. So you were, they were going to rent that equipment from somebody anyways. So why not rent it from you, meet their small business requirements or whatever, CBE, SBE, CSBE. They're going to have to meet those requirements anyways. So why not allow them to meet it through rental equipment? And so we did that very successfully here in Miami. My boys actually, when they were building the tunnel, right? My boys had the equipment that came. I mean, all we did was set up an account with United Rentals and um, what's the green company name? Sunbelt. We got national accounts with them. We went back and said, hey, you're supposed to hit whatever, 5%, 10% gold. We're going to provide the rental equipment, right? And it, you have to rent the equipment anyways. So you're just renting it through us. We're like a pass-through, but it's the equipment that you have to have on the job 
anyways. And guess what? I'm not going to interfere your project. I'm not going to delay it. I can't mess it up. So people are very comfortable giving you those kind of contracts to meet their goals because you're not going to slow down the project. So hope that helps. All right. What else? Herc. Herc is another one. Herc Reynolds. I used to have Hertz. So what else? See there? Look, I just plugged all my people in one interview today. What else? What else? What else? What else? All right. Well, no, no worries. Yeah, no. I mean, look, I fortunately <laughs> for you guys, I I bumped my head enough. So by me bumping my head, I was able to learn a couple of things when I got dropped on my head by some of these big guys. Uh, Maria is the teacher and she's saying our time is up. So I will see you guys. Um, you know, keep checking out the content, keep following, keep liking, keep sharing. I promise you, we have a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe. I'm putting a lot of money back into this. So again, um, I'm spending a lot to invest and in building up the platform, building up everything organization. And so it's real, I mean, it's only going to get better. So Hey, thank you guys for joining. Thanks, Sheena, for dropping in tonight. Um, great surprise. Uh, dump trucks are always needed. Good night, Tracy. Good night, Sergio. Good night, Maria. Good night, MTP, Johnny Spiva, the, Nikki, and the rest of our GovCon Giants family. Team Giants, let's go.